Hello. My baby and I are going to do a video that is going to coincide with some episodes, a series that we're doing with her for our podcast, Sweaty and Pissed, Menopause and More. And forgive me how I look. I have been traveling. I got back from Savannah, Georgia um, last night, and everybody in Savannah, Georgia, precious Thank y'all for having me. Um, so now I'm, uh, we're going to make some of these uh, videos before I go to my little mom and daddy. So my baby child um, is Tess Morgan, and she's a professional makeup artist. And she's been living with us during the COVID, and she's tired of it. Sure am. You? Sure am. <laughs> so anyway, before I get on the road, before I get on the road, she's going to show us how there's a series of these videos. So the first one will be how she prepares the skin to put on makeup on people. And I'm 54 and very crusty. Nah, you look young as ever. Thank you. I've got a little bit of a spray tan. Which we love. And an allergy headache. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We, do, we did talk about dermaplaning. We love dermaplaning. We love dermaplaning to get off the peach fuzz. And it kind of takes off, it sounds scary, but it takes off like the first layer of your skin, but it's the dead skin. And so it makes you really smooth, really, it's almost like an exfoliant. Um, so we really love that because part of the podcast that we talked about was exfoliating. It's very important because it gives you a great base for the skin. Because if you have that layer on your products, skincare and makeup won't soak into the skin. It won't look as... Yeah, dead skin. Uh, dead if you skin. got a bunch of dead skin. So she uses Dermaplane razors from that are very not dangerous from... Not she dangerous. orders them from Amazon. Amazon, kind of things like that. And it's... Um, I do recommend, if you can, if you can't, you can do it yourself. But every two to three months, depending on how fast your peach fuzz grows... Get it professionally done because they use like a scalpel, like a surgical Medical. scalpel. Mm -hmm. And so they can get really deep. You're not going to be able to get as much skin off, uh, much of that dead skin off as you would be able to if they did it with one that you do at home. But it's still for touch-ups. If you're somebody that gets like a little bit darker or thicker hair around the chin, mustache area, sideburn area, you can absolutely touch up at home. And so I do recommend, if possible, to get a professional one done. If you want, just every three months, just to be able to get a really good dermaplane going. Yeah, they'll scrape off, and it'll be a it'll be a pile of skin. It'll be a pile. Scrubs, it'll be terrifying. But, but de aging, unbelievable de ager. And sometimes I shave my little mama. I just because I don't I don't like the dermaplane razors like she does. She when she goes to see my mama, she does it. Me, I just get one of my little daddy's Gillette razors and I just take that hair off of her and then I do that as well her. sometimes I use an actual razor because I have PCOS so I can get a little bit thicker a little bit darker hair sometimes and I think a razor gives closer shave and helps it stay longer um and so yeah. as long as you use a new one that's clean you prep your skin well you moisturize afterwards it's just like using a dermaplane razor it's just it looks like a, a razor. razor it's just it's yeah the same though and it won't make it. And don't be scared that you're 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 gonna come back with a beard. You're not. You're gonna be like the bearded lady on Grady's show. It doesn't come back thicker or darker unless you have something like PCOS that you already know of that can cause hair to do that. But if you're normal, should not do that. It out. doesn't. Now your hair may grow more in the summer. Is it the summer where you get more peach fuzz? Yes, because There's your skin's times naturally the year. more hydrated. I need a dermaplane. I've got a mustache right now. But anyway, she's anyway. going to. So, beginning, we always start off with obviously washing the face and exfoliating two to three times a week, depending on your skin type. That is going to help your makeup go on so much better. I highly recommend um, a couple of different brands. The Laura Mercier Face Polish. It's a really great one. And then this one is the, what is it called? Abaji? Abaji. Abaji one. And I've used this one too. There comes in a tube and there's one that comes in a jar. Um, both of those are also really, really great. And she's going to be, she's going to tag all this in her um video yes. on her site and there's one you can get in the drugstore called a cure a c u r e very inexpensive and, and that's a, a good exfoliant it's a seaweed exfoliant so the natural physical exfoliant is seaweed so that's really nice for the skin really gentle yeah but that turns your skin over so you don't look crusty but as of now we are already prepped by washed and exfoliating so now we're going to add our favorite moisturizer we both love the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. 
It is really great for all skin types and all ages. A little bit pricier, but absolutely worth it because you only need like a pea size amount. And so with that, we like to focus more of the hydration where you're drier. So when it comes to somebody with more mature skin, usually we're at the cheeks and kind of the perimeter of the face because everybody always has a little bit of oil in the middle of the face, but... I don't anymore. She doesn't anymore. <laughs> Since I'm in menopause, I don't. I, I pray for oil. We it pray. never comes. It never comes. But the nighttime um, routine that we talk about in the video involves like oils and serums. I typically, depending on the serum, if it's a hyaluronic acid, that's a little sticky and that can help makeup last longer. Other ones you want to do significantly before you start your makeup because it can make things slip and slide around. So just be careful with that. And I need a little eye cream too, don't I'm know. aware. She said, I'm aware. I got you, girl. We're going to be using... She gets tired of me. I do, but I love her so dearly. I am buying about... I've got all kinds of products. And I, and I love them. And I, and I never... I mean, I, I do use up all my products, but I've just got stuff everywhere. But I've got a bag that goes to my little mom and daddy's. I've got a bag that goes when I'm traveling to do comedy. i got a... You know, so I've just got uh, eye creams and things everywhere. But any kind of eye cream that you like, go for it. They're all pretty much semi do the same thing. So I like to take the eye cream, very gently tap it, and then I actually like to put Ooh. a little bit of eye cream, a little fun tip, because it's so hydrating, it helps prep your lips. Oh. And any of those, if you have any of those fine lines, the older you get, and they I also <laughs> help smooth. Because I smoked yeah, in my too. 80s when I was dancing to Prince. And I suck out of a straw because my teeth hurt. Look up for me. Super gentle taps. And you want to let this soak in for a few minutes before you start makeup because it will tend to slip and slide around. Lovely. But because we're doing this series, she's going to do, it's a four part, so she's going to do, this is the first one, preparing our skin for our makeup, and when you are uh, mature skin, because my podcast is called Sweaty and Pissed, Menopause and More, so this is the more part where we give you information about that, and we're just so tickled that we have Tessie to do it. Okay, and then the, um, look forward to the next week will be... Um, building your the foundation and your concealer and then the next one um, I guess will be your cheeks and bronzer and cheeks, blush. bronzer that kind of thing and then we go on to the eyes and, we and the eyes, eyes will be the last one and we may add on some because but you know just little tips for people our age so what else you so, got last thing we're gonna do is just prep the lips with a little bit of any kind of chapstick lip balm anything like that will also help with lip liners also staying, not bleeding into the lips. And now we are fully prepped for makeup. Okay, thank y'all. Okay, oh, and you'll get all the information that we talk about on the podcast. She's gonna tag all those companies and all those different price points, um, you know, high end, all the way to, you could go walk into your Walgreens or CVS, so. Okay, thank you. Say goodbye, baby. Bye. See y'all next time.